I have a joy like a river, joy like a river, joy like a river in my soul. I've got a joy like a river, joy like a river, joy like a river in my soul. I got a joy like a river, joy like a river, joy like a river in my soul. I got a joy like a river, joy like a river, joy like a river in my soul. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Actually, today I'll be speaking on the laws of faith. The laws of faith. And our key scripture will be from the book of Matthew chapter 14. Matthew chapter 14, verse 22 to 33. Someone can read, please. So Matthew 14. Yeah, Matthew 14, verse 22 to 33. Matthew 14. said, when Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him onto the other side, while he sent the multitudes away, and when he had sent the Moses away, he went up into the mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was uh, there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, towed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. Straightway, Jesus spake unto them, saying, be of good cheer, it is I be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be that, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, boys terrors, he was afraid. And beginning to sing, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, Wherefore, this thou doubt. And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. 33. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, Of it, thou art the Son of God. Okay. Faithful Father, Lord, as we hear your word, I pray that you grant us understanding, speak to our hearts, mm -hmm. grant us the grace to see, Lord, the way you want us to see. Speak in the way we will understand. And Lord, let the Holy Ghost take control. We have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. So Amen. I'll be speaking on the laws of faith. If we look at this scripture, the starting point says, and straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him onto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. Now, if we should consider this, there are things we should think and ponder about faith. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 that faith is the substance of things. So when we talk about substance, it, uh, the word substantiate comes from that word substance. If it cannot be substantiated, then it is not faith. When you talk about something being substantiated, it's something that can be proved, something that has an evidence. So if your faith cannot be proved, if in fact they take you to a law court and they need to prove that you are a Christian and they cannot prove it, then you are not in faith at all. So faith is something that can be substantiated. So faith is the substance. And we'll be talking about the laws of faith. In Matthew chapter 14, the first thing we'll look at is that Jesus sent the multitude away. So I will say that faith actually gains momentum when you occasionally separate yourself from the people. When you can go to the Lord in solitary place, you can pray, you can call on him, and he speak to him one on one. So if we look at that part in verse 23, it says, and when he has sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. Apart. 
So Jesus has that culture of going apart, either to a solitary place or somewhere alone to pray. If Jesus, who was God, although he came in flesh, could need God so much that he would long for his presence, I don't know who we are, that we cannot go back, stay apart, and long for the presence of God. Indeed, the presence of God is something that is so wonderful that we need to plug into his presence. There are a lot of things to gain from God's presence. I, I will actually um, love to give an illustration with um, a magnet. This is a nail, and these are pins. We see that the nail has no power, so it can't attract the pins. But now when the nail goes to the presence of a magnet, this is a magnet. So when the nail stays with the magnet over a while, you will find out that it's able to pick pins. The more it stays over a while in the presence of the magnet, the longer it stays, the more power it gets. So when we stay in the presence of God, we find out that we get power. That is why even Jesus could not do without going to a solitary place, place to stay in the presence of God. So, you can see what happens. There is power in staying in the presence of God. So, let's go ahead with the presentation. Faith gains momentum when you occasionally separate yourself from the multitude, and then when you plug into God's presence. Also, in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17, it says, Come out from among them and be ye separate. So God desires that we come out from the people and be close to him and gain power at his presence. Acts chapter 3, verse 19 says, Repent therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. The important part I want to point there is that so that the times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. There are times of refreshing in God's presence that we miss when we become too busy to abide in his presence. I'll talk about the second law briefly. In verse 27, it says, but straightway, but straightway Jesus spake unto them saying, be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. So the second thing I'll talk about is cheerfulness. That is one part that is very difficult in the issue of faith. Because many times when Christians go through some problems in life, their cheerfulness goes away, their joy is taken away. But Jesus said, the first thing he said to them was be of good cheer. So cheerfulness disorganizes the devil and actually gives mm -hmm. smooth ride for the manifestation of faith. The devil gets so disorganized when he's, he's meant to see you cry and you are happy. He wants to see you disorganized, but you are cheerful. That's why Paul will say rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. There are great examples of people who put forth cheerfulness, Paul and Silas. When they were in a time of pain, the Bible says they started singing. They were cheerful. They were giving God praise because you can't give God thanks without cheerfulness. So in their thankfulness, they were cheerful and the miracle occurred. Philippians 4 verse um, 4 and 6 says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, that thanksgiving talks about cheerfulness because you give God praise and thanks in cheerfulness. So cheerfulness disorganizes the devil. There is the story of one man who had a very bad dream. And in the dream, a masquerade pursued him and cut off his head and he woke up. When he woke up, he started rejoicing. He started shouting. He started praising God. People were surprised and say, ah, why are you praising God? He said, I had a dream. And in the dream, something cut off my head. They said, ah, so why are you praising God? He said, well, to me, they've cut off all the problems that were in my head. And that was how his miracle started. From the weeks coming, he started having miracles upon miracles. 
financial miracles and breakthrough because he rejoiced. He never wanted him to be afraid. But in that, in that place, he became cheerful. He started praising the Lord. So cheerfulness is something that is very important in the law of faith. I'll talk about the third law. It says in that same verse 27, be not afraid. Fear drains faith. Therefore, um, when you struggle with, um, you have different things, just take away fear. That's why when they were in the, by the Red Sea, the first thing they said, Moses said to them was, fear not. Fear not, because the Egyptian you see today, you will not see them again. So fear is something that drains faith. When we go forward, you see that fear drained the faith of Peter. He was meant to be walking on water, but fear drained the faith. So we must be careful the way we live our life. I've said that in Exodus chapter 14, verse 13. The message with uh, version says, don't be afraid. Stand firm and watch God do his work. So just stand firm and see God do his work. Praise the Lord. Now go ahead. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, the Bible says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. I tell people that if you have fear, it wasn't God that gave you. Either you stole it or you picked it from somewhere. Because the Bible said God has not given you the spirit of fear. So that fear you have in your life, where did you get it from? Where did you steal it from? Fear drains faith. So in the law of faith, keep fear away of your life. Hallelujah. Now I'll go to the fourth law. In law number four, Matthew chapter 14, verse 31, it says, and immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore this thou doubt. But before I read, I go to that law, I will look at um, from verse 28. It says, And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if thou be, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. And when he saw the wind brusterous, he was afraid and began to sink. So fear drains your faith. Fear takes away that faith you have in your life. It could be a small faith, but fear will just strangle it out of your life. The Bible says, catch it, the little foxes that eat the vine. So that little thing that brings fear, take it off you. Then he began to sink. But he cried, Lord, save me. I don't know what will have happened if he did not cry. <laughs> Probably he would have sunk and died. The truth in life is that sometimes your faith may not be strong. Learn to call on God. Learn to seek help. Yes, I've heard of testimonies of people who say they've never taken drugs for 10 years and all that. It is beautiful. Faith works. That is wonderful. I've experienced that grace on my life for some period now. Yeah, but there are times that you may not have the faith done just because somebody said it and you don't treat yourself. You are dying and you say, and somebody say he did not take drugs. If your faith does not carry you, please cry out to the Lord for help. That is an important point. Yes, we can speak all the faith and say we can do without drugs. That's beautiful. But where your faith is not carrying you, please cry out to God for help. That's talking about Peter. He cried to the Lord, and immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said, O thou of little faith, wherefore is thou thou? Little faith is a nuisance. Anywhere you talk, you hear Jesus say little faith. Most times that is trouble. He said, ah. Um, you prayed for this one, it is not healed. Oh, you of little faith. Ah, this you, Jesus was sleeping in the boat. People started crying. They could not do anything. Oh, you of little faith. So indeed, little faith is a nuisance. There is actually a difference um, be, 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 between little faith and small faith. As a little child, as somebody that just got born again, his faith may not be big. His faith could be small. The Bible says that if your faith is as small as a mustard seed, that you can say to a mountain, it will still move. So there's difference in scripture between small faith and little faith. 
in Matthew chapter 17, verse 20, says, and he says to them, because of your little faith, because of your little faith. But if your faith, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, so some scripture will say, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed. So you can see that that scripture talk about little faith and small faith. Little faith is a place of doubt. You have grown up in faith so much. You are a man of God for many years. But doubt has come in. It causes your faith to be little. That is, that is different from a child that is just coming to know God, that has a small faith. So if your faith is as small as a mustard, it can do exploit. Oh. But if it is little, you have put in doubt. You have mixed your faith with all manner of doubt. You have watched a lot of videos and things that has confused your faith. And your faith is now little. You begin to pray. Nothing happens. Begin to watch your faith. Begin to talk to God and say, God, increase my faith. Lord, take away my unbelief. Someone will cry and say, God, help my unbelief. Help, that is to say, help my little faith. You will have grown more than this in the faith. But you have mixed your faith with so many things. You, you listen to news. All the news you listen is about news of evils happening. <clears throat> you don't see anything to thank God for. All the news is just uh, how many coronavirus now has ha happened. Hey, I, I know it will soon reach 50. I know it will soon reach this. You are always talking on the negative, mixing your faith with doubts. And you say you are factual. Yes, factual. But your faith has gotten little. You need to work on your faith. How will it be going into a real war, picking a gun as a soldier, only to find out at the battleground? that it was only a toy gun. That's what little faith does to you. You say you have faith, you're a man of God. That is why men of God have died in the battlefield. Men, men of God have died at mission fields. They went to one mission field and one native doctor just confused them, destroyed their life. That is saying that they thought they had faith, but what they had was a toy, toy gun. What they had was this little faith Jesus is talking about. They have confused themselves, Listen to all manner of things, instead of staying in the presence of God. That's why we started by saying that you must stay away from the multitude. You must learn to abide. Blessed is he who is able to abide in the sacred place of the Almighty, under his shadow, and give all that God has for you. If you abide in God's presence, the, the, your level, truly, if you increase your level in God's presence, the way you you act now will be different. Elijah was a man of faith. When he introduced himself, he said, I am a man that stands in the presence of God. That made the difference. When Gabriel came to Mary to bring the news, he said, I am an angel. I stand in the presence of God. Presence of God carries power, power, power. Indeed, when you, have, when you stay and abide in God's presence so much, there are diseases that cannot just rest on you. We've heard of men of God, A. Allen, and people like that, who diseases cannot rest on them. We've heard of Charles Finney. He just enters a company and people start crying because he carries the fragrance of Jesus. When last did you come into a place and someone says, ah, is there's something different about you? You, you? Are you a Christian? Something, you, 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 you're acting like Jesus. When last the people say that? Or when you enter a place, they just start joking, making fun, jesting, talking of women, or you have lost faith with God. How little has your faith gone? It's time for us to ask the Lord. Say, God, help me. Help me. That's what the Bible says. Take heed, lest you fall. Examine yourself regularly, whether you are in the faith. It's scripture. It says examine, meaning that sometimes you may not know that your faith has gotten little. You may not know. So it says examine. Hey, am I still in the presence of God? Do I still study God's word? Am I still walking in God's presence? Check yourself regularly. Even as we, like, like we go for medical checkup, PME, do that spiritually. Check your status. There are times, there was a time, um, some time ago, my wife uh, looked at me and said, ah, and Daniel, you, you don't uh, wake up early and pray as you used to pray before. 
Ah, that one was a warning sign to me. <laughs> that was a warning sign to me. Truly, you need to examine yourself whether you are in the faith. Now to conclude, I would like to conclude with this. James chapter 1, verse 22. It says, don't fool yourself into thinking, into thinking that you are a listener when you are anything but letting the word go in one ear and getting out of the other. Act on what you hear. King James will say, um, don't just be a listener of the word. They be a doer of God's word. The reason I'm, I say this is because many times we hear messages and we just write notes and keep it, waiting for another message. It is time for us to be doers. Check yourself in this message. What should I do? Ask yourself, what is the action point? Number one, am I still abiding in God's presence regularly? Number two, am I cheerful? Cheerful in anything, you know, whether it's cheerful, give out, cheerful anything. Are you cheerful? Are you expressing your faith in joy? That's why I started with the song, I have a joy like a river. The third one, are you living in fear? Some of you are not just, some of us are not just living in fear, but we are sources of fear to people. So you send people text messages that will bring them fear. If you don't do this, something will happen to you. Have you heard? So you are, you are a transmitter of fear, not just being afraid yourself. Now you are now coming, you are now a work piece of the enemy. The devil has hired you to be giving people fear. You need to watch your life. Then check yourself. Has your faith gotten little? It's time to ask the Lord, say, God, please help me. God, please help me. Yeah, I can't do it alone. I need God to help me. Let us say a word of prayer as we round up. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you Amen. for the love and mercy. There is none like unto you. We thank you for the word we have heard today on the laws of faith. You have spoken expressly to us. And Father, we ask that, Lord, you will help us so that we will know you more. Lord God Almighty, that we will walk in the power of the Holy Ghost. Lord, I will begin to see the faith work. Faith works. It's a substance. Lord, it's an evidence. It works. Forgive us where we have not shown forth our faith to make people know you. Have mercy on us, Jesus. Thank you for your love and mercy. Be thou exalted, wonderful Lord. We have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.